I'm Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond. I'm a literacy specialist, and in this video, I'm gonna explain the difference between sight words and high frequency words. Before we dive in, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to do that now, and then also hit the little bell so that you don't miss out on any of the brand new videos that I post about teaching literacy in K2. Okay, so people often use the words high frequency words and sight words interchangeably as if they were the same thing, but technically they are not. So. Let's start with high frequency words, even though I feel like sight words is the term that gets used more often, I think it makes sense if we start with high frequency words. So high frequency words are just words that appear often in text. And we can determine high frequency words if we literally sat down with a bunch of beginning readers and we figured out, we tallied up like which words appeared most often. That's exactly what people did when words lists like the dolch and the fry were created. It's a mathematical thing, right? You look through readers and you see which words appear most commonly, and those are high frequency words. And knowing high frequency words makes the reading process easier for kids as they're learning to decode because those words appear so often that if they can read them very quickly, then it helps build their fluency and they have more working memory available to devote to things like decoding the trickier, less common words, and comprehending the text. So knowing high frequency words leads to fluency or can lead to fluency, which can lead to better comprehension too. So high frequency words are important. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about this, but um, some high frequency words are following like the typical rules of English, like then, for example, the sounds are th n, then, nothing surprising. And some are irregularly spelled like from. The sounds in from are f, er, uh, m. Mm. So if you notice, the uh sound is spelled or represented by the letter O, which is surprising. So you can say that from is irregularly spelled because it has this surprising sound for the letter O. So some are regularly spelled and some are irregularly spelled. Let's shift gears and talk about sight words. Now, when a reader learns a high frequency word well so that they can read it instantly by sight, then it becomes a sight word for that reader. Different people have different sight word bodies of knowledge, right? So like, to give you an example, I have a big sight word vocabulary, as do many adults, and when I think about like my doctor, <laughs> her sight word vocabulary might be bigger than mine or it might be more specialized to medical terms because I know that like sometimes when I get a medication, I kind of stumble through reading the word, you know what I mean? And so her sight word vocabulary includes those trickier, longer medical terms, but mine doesn't. So different people have different sight word vocabularies, which is totally normal. And you've seen this in your students too, right? If one kiddo can read the high frequency word would, then it's a sight word for them. But if another kiddo in your class can't read the high frequency word would, then it's not a sight word yet, and it's something that you may want to work on. So a sight word, a, a high frequency word can be a sight word, but we know many other words beyond high frequency words, right? Like you might have a first grader that knows the word dinosaur by sight. And that's not a high frequency word that you're teaching, but they really love dinosaurs, so they know that word. It's become a sight word for them. Or if you've got like a three or four year old that can recognize their name by sight, that's a sight word for them. Or maybe, you know, McDonald's or the name of a common store, right? That's become a sight word for them, even though it's not necessarily a high frequency word. So in a nutshell, our goal as teachers is for many high frequency words to become sight words for our students. And I would love to know if you would leave me a comment, how do you address high frequency words in your class? Um, do you go over them daily? Do you have like a certain routine that you use? Let me know in the comments kind of what you do for this. And I am also gonna share what I do with high frequency words. Now I have covered this in other videos and you can watch some other videos that I have to see how I, um, you know, work with sound boxes, but actually I'll show you a little bit about sound boxes here too. And whenever I'm teaching a high frequency word, I wanna focus on activating kids' brains, certain parts of their brains, three main parts. One part of their brain that deals with the meaning of the word, another part that deals with the sounds in the word, and another part that deals with the spelling of a word. So it's much more than me just holding up 
you know, a word and saying, okay, memorize this word. That's not what we're doing because that's not what the brain research shows to be most effective in really getting kids to master words, okay? So when I go over the meaning of the word, it's nothing fancy. I'm not giving them like a drawn out definition. I'm just, for example, if I was teaching from, um, I might say, okay, my aunt is from Mexico or whatever, right? Um, this shirt came from Target. I'd come up with a sentence and if I can make it something relevant and fun for them, all the better. I then like to have my students come up with their own sentences and we're just talking orally at this point. So they would turn to a partner and come up with a sentence that has the target word with it. I should have also mentioned before I you know, started going to the sentence thing, I would tell them what the word was. I would have them say it so they're really clear on what word we're talking about. And then the next thing I would do is talk about the sounds in the word. And um, you can have like little, I'll hold this up real close, but you can have sound boxes where the kids are pushing counters for each sound in the word. And I'll talk about that when I go over this sheet, but you can also just have them like chop or tap out the sounds. So if the word is from, the sounds would be, and this might be reversed to you, but I, you want the kids to do it left to right with their non-dominant hand f or uh, mm, from, and those are the sounds. And at this point, I'm not asking them to talk about the letters or having them look at the word per se. You can show them a sentence with the word, but when I um, want them to think about the sounds, I actually take the word and sentence away because I want them to just listen for um, from, okay? So then once we have talked about the sounds in the word, then we match those to the letters in the word, the spelling of the word. So in the case of from f or um, uh, mm, we would talk about how the F, the R, and the M represent like typical, you know, typical spellings, typical sounds, but then the O is unique because instead of the A ah sound, which we might expect, it actually represents the sound a uh, or a uh, m mm, from. And there's different ways to do this, but you just want them linking, hey, this is the, these are all the sounds in the word, and this is how you spell the word. So essentially you're asking them to sound out the high frequency word. And you know, when I was first taught how to teach sight words, as we called it, uh, high frequency words. Um, the idea was don't sound it out, just have them read it instantly. But the research tells us and um, brain imaging tells us that readers read all words pretty much the same. So when we're asking our kids to sound out certain words, we also want them to sound out high frequency words. And we just have to show them where the tricky parts are, like with the O that represents the uh sound. So we're teaching them how to sound out a word. So again, this process was we talked about the meaning of the word, the sounds in the word and the spelling of the word, and we linked the sounds to the spelling. And you're probably going to have to like help them practice this more than once. It's not always like a one and done thing, especially when it's a trickier word like from. But that's the general process that I go through. And now I'm going to show you some materials that I use with them to kind of facilitate this process and and really to follow up with it. Right. Because just because I teach it, and I introduce it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to remember it. So I have these focus sheets. I have them for Dolge, Fry and an editable version. You can check the caption of this video for those links. But um, so this is for the word who. Right. And the word who is wacky because it has the sounds. ooh. And these letters, they're unexpected, right? Normally the W and the H don't work together to say huh. and then the O not not always working to say ooh, right? Like normally we would see that spelled with two O's. So I would have gone over all of this with my kids already and then they could do this independently or with me in small group where they're tracing the word, they're finding and circling it. They're using counters to push huh, ooh and just say the sounds and then they're actually writing the word WH to represent the sound and then the O to represent the ooh sound. They're writing it in sound boxes. Um, I have them read it out loud three times and tap W-H-O who, they're reading it as we're doing this, W-H-O who three times. I have them write it and then I have them, depending on their you know abilities, I'll have them read some little sentences with the word. That in context practice is important. And so this is another example of in context practice where they're reading a little passage and um, it has not only the word who, but other words that they've been working on. So these, it's integrated. These are included with the focus sheets if you're looking for that link. And then of course, games, games, games. We always got a review and games are a fun way to do that. So uh, in these packets, I have like a cumulative review where there's like five words and the kids are working on them um, playing different games. So 
These are some review activities that can really reinforce what you're doing in class. And especially with the focus sheets, it helps drive home the point of like, we are matching the sounds to the letters and it just helps them stick in their brains. So if you wanna learn more about those resources, head to the caption. Of course, let me know if you have questions. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.